everyone. Welcome back to my channel, also known as The Stitching Cafe. Spring has sprung here in Oregon, although the weather's not quite reflecting that yet. The neighbors sure are. So if you hear a lot of uh, mowing and all kinds of motor noises in the background, we've got some landscaping going around in my neighborhood. So yeah, spring has sprung. It's been very, very gusty. We've had a lot of rain. But um, it's been getting a little bit warmer and I'm looking forward to that because my feet have been cold for so many months. I'm ready for them to warm up. I've been trying to make this video for at least a week. But you know what? I've had to put this unnecessary stuff aside to do some necessary stuff. And I've had some people needing my help. So I can't begrudge, you know, helping someone out. And... Um, it wasn't my plan, but I've got some stuff to show you today. I have been able to do a little bit of cross stitch over the past two weeks, although this last week, not really much of anything has been done either with stitching or with diamond painting, but I do have a new start and I've shared it on Instagram, but I'm going to share it with you today. This is, let me get this straight. This is my new start by Nora Corbett and this is Colombian Nymph Ballad. I'm going to go ahead and show you a picture of the pattern here because all I have with me today are my working copies and I don't think they want me to show you those. So I'm super excited about her. I think she's going to be adorable on this polka dot fabric. And this is the Teat Point 32 count gray and white polka dot fabric on 123 stitch. I love this fabric. I think this is actually my favorite um, more than the neutral color with the white. I really love this gray one. I think she's going to be super cute on this. I know it's not much of a start, but this is only the little bit I was able to do in about um, three days of stitching. So not much, but it's a start and I'm excited about it. And I'm going to be placing an order in the next day or two for the um, little bits and bobs I need to be able to finish her because I already have the frame and I'm super excited to get her done. Love her color. She's just spectacular colors. And the boots and the wings, of course. I love butterflies. And this is another whip that I've been able to put a little bit of work into. Not quite as much as I had hoped, but I really went on a, a low drag no diamond painting or stitching for a while. Um, I finally picked it up and got a little bit of work done on my Joan Elliott's Time Traveler. Like I said, it's not a whole ton done yet, but I really, really like her a lot. I am working on the Skin 1 over 1, which takes more time. Um, and that's probably why I have been dragging on working on her some more, because... Um, I'm working right on the face part and I want to be so careful putting in those tiny stitches in the face. I want her to look just right. I am stitching her on, let's see what this is. This is a 32 count vintage Stormy Night Lugana, also bought from 123 Stitch. And I think she looks really good on this one. I wanted to for sure put her on a hand dyed, but I didn't want to go too wild and I didn't want to go too many funky colors. This is really just such a nice neutral and I think it, it pulls out the the modeling well and I, I really like that. So you'll have to forgive me, I don't want to take it off of my cue snaps right now. Those are the two other than my hay that I've been working on, although I haven't put any more stitches on my hay since my last video so I'm not going to show that again. I did put in one uh, one, two, three stitch order about a month ago, and that's where I got um, my petite point fabric for my Colombian in Nymph Alad. And I got an additional piece of the vintage Stormy Night fabric, which again I love. This is one of my new staple pieces, it's great. This is a 13 by 18, 32 count. And I am going to stitch Nora Corbett's Poison Ivy on that. Again, I have several hand dyed fabric pieces. Nothing that really accommodates the lime green terribly well, so I wanted something more neutral and I think that's gonna look good. Although, I didn't realize my stickers popping off of this thing. But I think that's gonna look really good. And these are her colors. I already have her colors um, 
purchased and bagged. So I think that's going to look really good. And again, I'm really excited to get going on her too. I'm a little distressed that most of Nora's new pictures, if they call for beads, most of them are the Magnifica beads and not the regular Mill Hill size. Because they're like three times the price, that's not terribly huge of a deal when you're only buying three, um, three bead packets. But goodness, when you're doing the larger pictures and it calls for 10, 12 packets of Mill Hill beads, that really adds up. So I like it, if they're going to call for the Magnifica beads, to use them in multiple projects. For some reason, the ones in both of these small ones I'm going to do, they don't call for them in any other picture. So I am looking into getting some of the regular Mill Hill, asking the one, two, three stitch ladies if they could help me find comparable colors. And they've actually helped me, so I'm going to be switching up some beads on these um, and saving myself a little bit of moolah in, in the process. This is, um, my day is a little overcast today, can you tell? As I go a little southern unexpectedly. Um, this is another piece of fabric I got on eBay recently. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but it is a very, very soft pink and white modeled. Can you see the modeling? I can't tell if you can see that well. It's actually a really pretty piece of fabric. Let me take it out of the plastic here. And this is by True Colors. And it's a 28 count even weave. This is what that fabric looks like up close. It's just a really pretty modeling. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but I thought it was such a pretty color. I like pink, but not too bubblegummy pink. This one's just a soft, like a, a little bit more than baby pink, but not too, um, not too bright or um, playful. It's just really subtle. So, I don't know. I'll have to show you what I come up with for this one. Because I think it's going to make a really pretty background. And I've just been preparing for some new starts, you could say. I've been getting little pieces of fabric all along. And I'll stick them in bags and I'll label them and I'll accumulate all the little bits and pieces I need for them. And I'll just get them ready and I'll, I'll stick them in a, a certain area saying, if you're ready for a new start, just pick one of those. They're all ready to go. So I have Tra La La's Paris one, just ready to pick up and go. And if you don't know which that one is, I'll show a picture too. And I also have picked out a piece of fabric and some colors for the Jardin Privé Cat Lovers. And I have chosen some of my own color combinations for this picture. And I'll share that also. Because I um, I wanted to switch it up and not have it be so earthy toned. So I made it a little more bright and playful colors. Can you see that? I don't want the lights to be too bright on it. But I went with a little more um, teal instead of blue. A little more berry instead of uh, rusty. So I'm just kind of switching around some colors subtly, but yet they make quite a big difference in the overall picture. So yeah, I've got some things ready to get going. I'm not going to be sitting with idle fingers um, unless I decide to read, because I have been doing some reading on the side when I just want some quiet. Reading is such a good outlet also. So um, yeah, if I need my fingers moving around and doing some things and I need to feel productive, I have got some things sitting here ready to go. I also have coloring books, adult coloring books that I have neglected for a long, long while that I may show you some of those coloring books one of these days because I have some really nice ones. But that's my stitching. I haven't done um, as much as I wanted to. We had a couple interesting days this week. Um, if it wasn't enough that last year we had about five or six different appliances go out and then my dad getting sick and his diagnosis and th going through all the chemo and everything. Well, this last week, week and a half, we've been having problems with our washing machine and about four days ago it went on the fritz and it's not working now. So we have decided we're going to get it repaired instead of um, replacing it right now. And so we're having to wait for some parts to arrive. And in the meantime, I have been hauling 
bag after bag after bag of heavy laundry to the laundromat and I spent quite a bit of time there just yesterday sitting there waiting for my washers to get done. Um, thankfully we still have a dryer that works so once the washing process was done we just bagged everything up and brought it home and did our own drying. I took my stitching with me and I did not end up stitching at all at the laundromat because I couldn't find a comfortable seat and I just said you know I'm gonna just sit here and read a little bit instead of try to focus on stitching because I had literally five washing machines going at one time like I said we had kind of accumulated a bit over the week before the thing finally died so now that we're caught up on quite a bit of the laundry we're feeling good the day before yesterday my uncle did something very very uncommon unusual and unexpected he called my mom up and said uh, hey you busy I'd like to take you out shopping and my mom didn't know what to think about that and so she said well yeah I can do that I need a few things at the store um, we'd actually run out of quite a few things in fact and she told him she'd be bringing me along because I'm really really in on the food process and the cooking process and everything as you can tell by my channel I do most of the cooking and most of the food prep so I really need to kind of get in there and, and check on everything and make sure we get everything we need he figured <laughs> it wasn't really unexpected that she would say that so he said well it's not gonna be much but it's not gonna cost you anything so let's let's go out shopping so we went out and we told him when we got to the store let us know what you want to cap it at we're not gonna you know we're not expecting you to just do um, an enormous amount tell us how much you're comfortable with and anything over that we're gonna pay for because well we needed some groceries anyway so that's just how we roll here and he said well I'll let you know let's see what you end up coming up with and I'll let you know so started out in the vegetable department which is a huge department for us we buy a lot of fresh things a lot of fresh meats and I cook a lot from scratch with a lot of food sensitivities there aren't a whole lot of ready-made foods you can make so you have to make things and you have to be really careful about every ingredient that goes in there so he didn't really like the waiting around in the vegetables produce department but you can that's just what we do um, and we ended up getting just a few extra things above and beyond necessities um, yes I did get a bottle of Snapple and um, they had some potato chips on sale so I got a bag of potato chips other than that everything was necessities we got up to the cash register and my mom says let me know I'm gonna pay for everything above and beyond what you want to pay for and I went over on the other end and I was bagging this stuff off um, which Oregon has just passed a ban on plastic bags so now we have to take our own bags with us to the stores and uh, things like that so I'm a very very tight packer and so I like to bag my own things up but we got out of the store and when we got home and got everything in the house and my uncle left my mom said he paid for the whole thing I was like, really? What? How, how much did the bill come to? And she goes, it was over $160 and he paid for the whole thing. So we were both in a bit of a shock over that. Um, but that was really, really nice of my uncle. I think he knows we've been having a harder time with, um, well, with finances in general since my dad's been sick. And um, so that was just a really big blessing and we were totally shocked. That was so nice of him to do that. and. So we've been kind of spending some time today writing him, writing him a thank you note and letting him know how much we appreciate that. So a couple of unexpected things this week. I'm really hoping we'll get everything done by tonight because I want to go um, to a conference this weekend. There's a, a, there's a really neat conference coming to our area and I'm really hoping to go to that. So we'll see if that works out. If it doesn't, well hopefully they'll be doing something again before too long but it has been several years since they've had one of those conferences and I'd really like to get in on it anyway um this isn't a terribly long video because I'm literally squeezing this one in amidst the police sirens um, literally squeezing this in in between uh, stuff I've got to do today 
But I hope you uh, enjoy watching um, my new starts and my new progress. And I'm really hoping this next week will be calmer and I can get really plug in on my Nora. I'm really excited to get going on this one. She is such a cute picture. Um, of all the um, butterfly fairies in Nora's collection, this has always been the number one grabber of my attention. And so I'm really, really hoping um, to get going on this and get her done soon. And I want to see what she looks like framed. I'm super excited about that. I've got a couple new diamond paintings that arrived this week in the mail, so I'm going to be showing those in a future video, so keep an eye out for that. And I'm going to be showing some new videos very, very soon with some of my finishes. I know you guys like watching finish parades, and I have some pretty excessive finish parades coming up, so stick around for that also. I'm going to be doing a video designated completely to Mirabilia and Nora Corbett. Look out for that one. That's going to be coming soon. And then some other videos with some other finishes from different designers as well. So I hope you'll come back again to visit me at the Stitching Cafe. And I'm so glad I was able to record some extra videos of uh, my audiobook and some cooking things before things got busy this last week. Because I was just able to click them on there and not have to worry and actually have some uploads. I really was hoping I could do... Um, a few more uploads each week than I've done, but I'm thinking three, maybe a possible bonus fourth video per week is about what I'm going to be able to handle right now. Maybe as the summer hits and things start getting a little calmer, with the heat comes less activity for us because we don't deal with heat well in my family. Um, hopefully with the summer will come more spare time for more viewings and more uh, videos and more sharing. So I hope you'll stick around. Thank you so much for visiting me today at the Stitching Cafe. I hope you had a nice cup of coffee or something to keep you warm or keep you cool wherever you are, depending on your climate. I had some coffee and I totally resisted drinking some. So anyway, I'm going to go finish my coffee now. And... I hope you'll have a good rest of your day. Until I see you next time, ciao for now. And I will see you around here somewhere. And I don't really know how I'm ending this. I'm just blathering on and on and on and on and on.